Good people, so the Torrent line of cases from Fractal Design is becoming one of my personal favorites. The Torrent Compact and the Nano are the latest additions to the series that not only look awesome, but really cater to deliver shockingly good airflow performance right out of the box with only a single fan for the Nano and those two massive fans for the Compact. Now, just like the original Torrent, the Compact and Nano carry over the same DNA, but smaller. So if you're looking at them on the website, for example, make sure you get the right one because at a glance, the Compact and the original Torrent look pretty much the same. As it stands, the Torrent Compact is my new favorite mid-tower for simple builds. Second Corsair 4000D. I still love because relocating the power supply up top means you need a seriously good front panel to deliver good airflow and also a very open floor design so the graphics card can breathe. And I actually prefer doing cable management when the power supply is up top. And so here are the two prices for the two cases, which is pretty steep to be honest. So you let me know after the review is finished how you feel about this price range and if it's decent for you. But Fractal is doing many things right. So here are my five things I love about the Torrent Compact. The totally toolless entry into the case. So both side panels pop off and can be secured for transport if needed. The front panel is removable at an angle like this and the top panel slides back to reveal the power supply chamber. So a screwdriver is not required. Please make sure not to hold the case by the top panel because it's not secured by anything. So you always gotta lift up the case from the bottom. Remember that. The frame around the PCI slot area is completely open so you can access the thumb screws with your fingers or a screwdriver without any issues. The Velcro tie down points are awesome behind the case to clean your high power cable because the power supply is up top and whatever else is exiting from the motherboard that might join the cable party. The included fan hub is such a good value but only for those insane builds because the hub can give power to nine fans although without individual RPM control. So you gotta make sure to plug in your CPU fan into your motherboard fan header, and then the hub with all the case fans into another one so you can control them separately. And of course, the design. It's such a nice departure from the boring but iconic Defiant series with a really unique front panel that you can immediately recognize as being the torrent. Oh, and I also love how compact this transition is to today's video sponsor. Mm -hmm. They're becoming smoother and smoother. I am so jealous of all who have access to Micro Center. Are you kidding me? They have everything to get you in the mood. Laptops for days for Eber, in stock hardware components. I mean, wow. And all types of gaming goodies for you know who. People call it tech heaven, but you don't gotta die to visit one. Go on a Thursday, for example. Prices are always competitive and I'm told they have over 30,000 items in stock and I call that confidence. New customers get a free SSD growing some market share I see. Check out Micro Center down below. All right, so now you know some of the cool features, let's bring it down a little bit with five annoying things about the Torrin Compact. The fans. While awesome to have such powerful and large fans included at stock, they are not pre-routed into the hub. Why is that? And also, unless something is plugged into the fan one header on the, on the hub, it actually won't send out the PWN signal to the motherboard. Cable management can be an absolute pain in the butt if you're using really stiff cables because it's best if they're all really bunched up in front of the power supply instead of being kind of spread out uh, behind the motherboard tray. But on the other hand, Having unrestricted top access to all your cables exiting from the power supply is awesome. So if you want to replace a cable, you don't need to take out a power supply from a power supply chamber at the bottom. Everything is accessible and can be manipulated easily, especially if you have those really soft cables like on this Fractal Design power supply. I love building with it. Then we have the ARGB strip in the power supply chamber. It needs to be connected to a five volt ARGB header on your motherboard, otherwise it won't even power on. So my test motherboard only has the 12 volt RGB plug, so I'm out of luck, but it's also not very uniform. You can clearly see the individual LEDs. And when you slide back the front panel dust filter, make sure that all eight notches are properly seated, otherwise the front panel won't click in place. And I really don't like the texture differences between the black and the white paint jobs. I mean, listen to this. The white one is coarse, like a PBT keycap, while the black one is smooth, 
almost like ABS. Moving on to the interior, if like me, you prefer properly fitted hardware when doing simple systems, then the compact will be exactly what you're looking for. It's mostly clean, except for the cables that need to reach the bottom of the motherboard. And since there are no cutouts underneath it, uh, they have to basically cross all the way from the right side. Hmm, doesn't look very good. Now fan and radiator placement is pretty decent for this size of case, but if you are mounting something to the front instead of the 180mm fans with your standard ATX motherboard, you cannot actually relocate the front fans to the bottom because they simply won't fit. So buy this case if you're air cooling only. And so for temperatures on the CPU side, performance is fantastic with that massive column of air that has no restriction. They did a really good job with the front panel as it's not an airflow barrier at all. And I would also lower the RPM of those fans to 600 RPM for a very quiet system. Now on the GPU side, because we have no exhaust fans or anything at the bottom for intake, it's not a surprising result that we get into this kind of middle pack with the compact, but you even see that lowering the RPM of the front intake has no effect on GPU temperatures. So I guess that's a good thing. Now, one thing Fractal is doing different versus everyone else is that frame at the front. So at stock, it's meant to accommodate those large 180 mil fans, but using these two brackets, you can simply sort of remount 140 or 120 mil fans, but then you'll have to figure out what to do with those awesome stock fans by default. At least you'll be happily dust proof as the filters are fantastic, letting in all the air and catching all the small particles. The included GPU bracket is pretty cool with two positions and full height adjustment to eliminate the sag. And storage wise, it's fairly simple. There are three SSD caddies at the back and this two position bracket up top for a three and a half drive and an SSD that conveniently acts as a cable compressor when closer to the PSU. Now for the smaller Nano, I love working with these type of uh, ITX cases because they're large enough, they're very easy to route and support triple slot GPUs and are CPU tower heatsink friendly. I wouldn't want to remove the included 180mm fan just so that I can mount a 240 rod in there because again, your 180mm fan would be wasted. And so this thing has all the same features as the bigger cases minus the fan hub as it's not necessary, but including the same IO, which is plenty. And cooling wise, it performs very well in the airflow scenario throughout my entire ITX stack, even though I'm not using a 240 rad here, but given the small volume of the interior and this massive fan pulling in the work, our GPU and CPU are plenty cool under stress. Interestingly, the Nano actually has more room at the back for cable management. Management, uh, so that made assembly super easy, even though I was using these disgustingly tough cables from the Silverstone power supply. Now, because the power supply is up top with these torrent cases, you cannot use that area for a traditional, like maybe fans or an AIO. So I would highly recommend you use uh, a regular heatsink system with these models so you can take advantage of that really strong brute forcing, fantastic airflow from the front while utilizing a good heatsink. So it's very airflow focused. It is different enough from the Defiant series. So there's that clear product separation. And one big advantage of the Nano layout in the ITX space is not needing a riser cable to remove any potential compatibility issues. This of course means the case is massive in the ITX space, but that's the comfort of using an ATX power supply mount and the large heatsink support Although I would say that $119 or 129 is very high for this layout compared to something similar like the P200A, for example, while the more innovative ITX solutions are more expensive, but for good reasons, you know, more cooling support for radiators and uh, similar GPU stuff while being a lot more compact. And speaking of the compact, I feel like the Torrent Compact is more reasonable price-wise given the amazing CPU temperatures and overall ease of use. I'm actually really starting to like doing cable management from the top, although I wish that 8-pin cutout was slightly bigger to make the plug-in a bit easier so you don't have to do the finger yoga around the CPU tower heatsink. So now you have all this information, I would love to hear your thoughts on the pricing for the Nano. I think that's way too much, especially 129 for the RGB version and the dual glass panels, like that's not necessary. The compact is more reasonable because of the airflow, but you know, I'm not building in these, uh, I haven't bought a case for myself in many, many years. So for people who are interested in building 
would you guys, uh, you know, spend the money? Let me know in the comments. Uh, list uh, links for everything will be listed down in the description below. I'm Dmitri. I'll talk to you in the next video.